Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to this episode of Eco Ask Why. Today, we're going to be jumping into one of my favorite topics, and that's the heroes, understanding our heroes of industry. Today, our hero that we're going to be talking with is Mr. Dan Lehman from Eaton, and very excited to sit down with Dan. Dan's brought a lot of information to us so on other podcasts and uh, from Power and, and Art Flash Studies and things like that, and, and Dan, just a great partner of Eco in general. And so, Dan, welcome. Hope you're having a great day. Yeah, thanks. Uh, definitely am so far. Appreciate it. Well, great, great. So can you just start with our listeners? Just just tell us about your journey that, that you had to the role that you're in now. Sure. Well, you know, I uh, <laughs> I, I think hero is an interesting term. I, I definitely don't. Uh, yeah, uh, it, maybe an industry titan. I don't know. Maybe that would be better. But uh, <laughs> so... I'm from New York originally, kind of spent some time there, moved to Michigan when I was in high school and went to college in Michigan and got a mechanical engineering degree and wanted to work as an automotive engineer and uh, couldn't find any work in Detroit when I was graduating. So we, uh, me and my wife packed up and moved to North Carolina and I landed a job as a drafter actually with uh, Eaton down at their motor control center plant in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I spent seven years in Fayetteville uh, designing and testing and marketing motor control centers, motor control center, new product development, aftermarket solutions. I was part of the FlashGuard motor control center design team, uh, which had just kind of given me so much experience with design, with design practices, with the electrical industry. I'm a mechanical engineer with very little electrical knowledge, but uh, that kind of set me on my path of of lifelong learning. And so uh, I left Fayetteville after about seven years and and moved up into the Raleigh area where I started as a production manager in our uh, satellite plant uh, in Raleigh, where we make panel boards and switchboards. And so that really kind of got me moving into the operations world and and uh, understanding what makes a plant run and and trying to keep my staff wanting to come to work every day so that that was uh that was always a challenge but did that for a while and uh moved into the plant manager position there at the satellite after a few years and and started kind of running the plant from a business operations standpoint and about three years later which was last february um 2019 i moved into this engineering services role where I'm, I'm leading the uh, engineering services team for Eaton in the Carolinas and Northern Georgia. So lots of great experiences along the way, each opportunity kind of shaping and, and kind of carving its own way in my career, but also just giving me a lot of opportunities to learn. That's great. That's great. Now you said you went to school in Michigan. Where, where'd you go to school there? I went to a, an engineering school that nobody's ever heard of. It's uh it's Lawrence Technological University. Uh, it actually shares a campus in Southfield, Michigan, with our Eaton uh, Automotive Tech Center. So it's it's it, that's actually where I first heard about Eaton. Didn't know what they did, but um, they were on campus, and that's kind of how I started looking for Eaton jobs. Was because I saw that building next door to my college. Right. Well, that's pretty cool. You know, you came full circle. You definitely have done great while you're at Eaton and, and, and you, you deal a lot with industry. So what do you see as some of the greatest challenge industry has over the next, you know, five years or so? What, what, what are you seeing or hearing uh, that's an indicator? Well, you know, I, I think honestly, you know, I got to be delicate how I say this, but when I walk down sites now and when I meet with even our sales teams and our distributors, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, seasoned individuals that have been doing this work for 20, 30, sometimes 40 years. And I'm not necessarily seeing a lot of 
bench, as they say. I'm not seeing a lot of electricians, you know, out of college or out of trade school or out of high school. I'm not seeing a lot of facility managers that are uh, mentoring the next generation. And, and, and there's many reasons for that. But honestly, I see that as a huge skills gap for this industry. I don't know if it's the marketing of the industry. I don't know if it's the fact that we live in these electrical rooms that are dark and dingy and sometimes wet. They shouldn't be, but sometimes are. You know, I don't I don't know what it is. You know, electricians, my dad was an electrician for 25 years with the IBEW union up in New York. And it's hard work. It wears on you. And, and maybe that's part of it, too. But I really see a skills gap forming. It's already been forming. And I just I don't see it closing. Absolutely. We agree with you on that. And that's something that, you know, we're hoping little, just little things like this, this podcast will hopefully, maybe there is that, that, that young individual who's listening and trying to think through what their career steps are going to be. And they're interested in electrical and some encouragement here, you know, there is a great field to be in. It's a, a secure field for one and things are going to always changing technology is moving. And so, uh, but I, I, I'm with you, Dan, I definitely recognize that as a gap, you know, for sure. And you mentioned mentors there. And I think in, any chance we get to mentor people uh, along their path is a, it's just something we should do, but this is an opportunity for you. Do you have any mentors that you'd like to recognize now throughout your career? You've, you've obviously done very well. You've, you've had a, a lot of different roles of, of from oversight and business any any people out there that you'd like to uh, just give some recognition to? Sure. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's one of these things where somebody once told me, and it may have had to do with, uh, it might have been from, from church. I'm trying to remember. But anyway, it was, you should, in your journey in life, you should always be following somebody, and somebody should be following you. So basically, you should be working with a mentor, and you should be mentoring somebody else. Because those offer different things to your life. And what I'll say is that one of the strongest mentors was a, was a boss that I had when I first came out of the uh, Fayetteville plant and up to the Raleigh Satellite plant. He, his name was Pat Gerstner. He is Pat Gerstner. He's not dead. He just retired. Uh, he, he was uh, running that satellite plant for many years. He had a great relationship with everybody. But he, you know, there was just something about the way that he managed people that was very inspiring. And he kind of gave me a lot to, uh, I learned a lot from him. I, I was a manager before I came to that plant, but I can honestly say I might not have been, I, I, I can look back now and say I probably wasn't the best manager. And it was when I kind of came under his wings and kind of watched and observed how he was stern, but compassionate you know that really kind of sunk in with me and and honestly it's been a cornerstone of my career since then is is how do i lead these people that i work with you know i just think that you know he he did such a great job and i don't know that i've ever told him that so hopefully i'll i'll have him listen to this podcast one day and he can blush or something i don't know but uh yeah well that's great i mean that, it sounds like he was a a great leader and definitely he was. you have taken a lot of his, his teachings and applied it yourself. So just thank you for that. I mean, and if you were from a mentor st uh, standpoint, while we're on this, this topic here from advice, what advice would you give people that want to pursue a career like yours? So I honestly can tell you that I think it has to do with just two things really a, a kind of a, a passion for for learning for you for you for you to learn and grow intellectually and uh commercially and grow as a leader you know you should constantly be trying to to grow and, and better yourself which in turn betters the people around you but the the only way that that works is if you're engaged with the situation around you so your job your boss your subordinates your peers you're engaged with them you're engaged with the product and you're asking questions as i mentioned i you know i came out of school with a mechanical engineering degree you asked me to design a spring and i'll have k factors i'll have i'll have 
I'll have everything laid out for you. I'll have coil diameters, forces through the normal. I'll have it done. But coming out of college, you asked me what a motor starter did and how it worked and what a coil was or anything having to do with a circuit breaker. And I was lost in the woods. And the only way that I was able to pick up anything was to just be kind of latching on to the the folks around me that were my peers that were just, you know, been doing it a while, very smart and ask a lot of questions. Just ask, because even if you have to ask the same question 15 times and you might get that frustrated look from, from your people around you, it's going to make you a better person. Ask questions and learn. Absolutely. And on that learning standpoint, you know, what are some resources that, that have really helped you along your way that maybe you would recommend to, to our listeners out there? Well, I'm a, everybody learns differently. Um, I happen to be the kind of person that learns through doing from the, my first moment in any job, I'm, I'm typically kind of diving in with my hands. You know, I'm, you know, what's a motor starter? Well, you know, Eaton has some great online courses you know, Eaton University is a phenomenal tool that our distributors and our salespeople and our customers and our internal people can use to learn about stuff. But going and walking out into the shop floor at the Fayetteville plant and pulling a, a motor starter off the shelf and kind of pushing the plunger and watching contact move and, you know, maybe not telling anybody, but going and getting a little cheater cord and plugging it and, and wiring it into the coil and watching what happens that's how I learned. You know, that's, that's how I picked up on what, what my goals were, what I, what I was trying to do. And then, you know, part of my job was designing motor control center buckets. And I did some really comp, like I designed some really kind of compact MCC units. And, you know, I actually went out and physically wired some of it because that's how our customers interact with our equipment. They are running control wires to our terminal blocks. They're running motor leads to the starter. And if I was going to be expected to design a product, then I should pretty much know how it goes together. And so that's that's kind of one way of learning. Some people can get that from a textbook, uh, and that's okay, and that's great. Um, I can't. I couldn't. And so I had to find other ways, which was kind of embedding myself in the areas that I don't have much knowledge uh, and, and just plowing through it. Absolutely. And I, I think we, we find that pretty common, you know, as, as most engineers, they, they like to be hands-on, right. And, and, yeah, and to definitely. learn that way. And speaking of engineering, this is a kind of a fun question here. Uh, a lot of people have preconceptions of engineers or, or engineering managers, what, what have you, uh, what's a common myth, uh, about your profession or our profession, if you will, that you like to debunk here. I mean, you have a chance right here to say, you know what, you think engineers do this, but here's reality. So what would that myth be? Okay. Well, anytime anything goes wrong in our house or in our car and I can't fix it, people always say, you're an engineer. You should be able to fix that. Well, I'm a mechanic. I'm not, I mean, I'm not a mechanic. I'm an engineer. I could design it and I wouldn't have designed it this way. That's causing me all this grief. I would have designed it differently. That is very frustrating when being an engineer gets thrown in my face. But there is there is a common misconception about engineers that we wear pocket protectors and we walk around with tape on our glasses. And while some of us do, some of us do it ironically now, but some of us, you know, yes, okay, we're maybe some of us aren't the most social people out there, but many, the majority of us are. We, we're we just normal people that have a job where we can dive into these weeds and we, we love accuracy and what we're doing. We are always prepared with a Sharpie or a pen or a pencil in our pockets, maybe not in our chest pockets, but in our pockets, we're typically coming with a pen, but you know, we're not, you know, the stereotypical you know, engineers from the, the, <laughs> from the movies and the comics, all right? We're a little bit more intellectual than that. And, and definitely I've met some engineers that, you know, there's some pretty cool cats out there. You got that right. And, and uh, 
just for our listeners, I'm talking to one. So this is, this is great, great answer, Dan. <laughs> great answer, man. So you, you mentioned that there's a, there are a lot of things that, that get you excited. What, what gets you the most fulfillment in your work? Well, so when I was, uh, what we call it Eaton is an individual contributor. So, so before you manage people, you're an individual contributor and your job is to basically go in and, and do your job and follow, you know, the, the goals that are set and, and achieve those goals, you know, and that's, that's, that's always a great feeling when you can start ticking things off your list and you feel like you've actually contributed as an individual. But when I became a manager back in 2010, and then really when I moved up to the Raleigh satellite plan in 2013 and actually started leading a production team, I'll have to say that the most fulfilling work I have is related to kind of leading people and getting results through my team. And, you know, part of my mantra or method, I guess, is that, you know, we are all on my team doing the same thing and working towards the same goal. So that means that you know, if, if my team in the, in the um, satellite plant was behind in a particular assembly area, I'd throw my gloves on, I'd go out there and I'd, I'd help my team. We'd do the same thing. We, we, you know, they need help wiring. I'd be out there wiring. They need somebody to sweep up after them at the end of the day. I'd sweep up after them at the end of the day to help them out. We all have the same goals. And so that's been, Getting those results and watching a good team actually function like I have now in engineering services with the team I have in the Carolinas, that part is just awesome. And uh, it, it, it keeps me going because I, I every day I see more and more amazing things. That's great. That is great. Teamwork is, is everything. And, and you know, that, that also shows to, to your development and your leadership that you recognize that man. So that, that is, that's wonderful. And for you, for, from, 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 from your career, is there anything that stands out as a really cool highlight, you know, something that maybe was a cool project or, or, you know, just, just something that stands out like, you know what, I was involved with this and this was, this was really neat. So is there anything along those lines you'd want to share with our listeners? Um, yeah, you know, uh, when I came down to Fayetteville, I was put on a project kind of right off the bat and it was called at the time it was called, um, metal clad. Okay. That was what we called it, but it, it turned into what's called the flash guard motor control center. And I was part of the design team that designed the racking mechanism for the flash guard MCC. And I look back in my career and I see what flash guard has done for our industry I see what it's done as a leader in our industry where, you know, I see some other outstanding competitors in this, in this industry, designing racking mechanisms and, and all of it was there to drive safer work practices and electrical work with our users, with the people that interact with our equipment and being a part of that team back in starting in 2007 and launching, you know, through 2008, nine, that was just such an amazing experience. And, you know, there's, there's things that I did and learned on that project that uh, I, I just look back and think it was just some of the most powerful. It was such a powerful part of my career and I learned so much and I got to work with so many great people, you know, and, and, you know, kind of landed a few patents out of that deal too. So that, that wasn't all that, uh, that wasn't all that bad. Uh, that is awesome. That great. That is a great highlight, Dan. So let's let's kind of talk about you outside of eating right now. So you can take your eating hat off and just put your, you know, the Dan hat on. Got yeah. any hobbies or anything like that that you like that you enjoy to do outside of work? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I got two boys. So I have an uh, eight, soon to be nine year old boy, and I have a five and a half year old son. So we we fish. You know, we like going fishing pretty much pretty much any time we can. So fishing's a lot of fun. I enjoy, you know, I, I like cooking. So, you know, this whole working from home thing on, under these current conditions that we're in, you know, I've been kind of cooking dinner at night and, and that's been, that's been a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I do enjoy golfing. So, you know, that's, that's an area where I've, 
I've uh, I've been golfing since I was uh, you know, I don't know in middle school or something, and it's always been a lot of fun. I like getting out there and um, you know spending some time with. Uh, I, I, the only time I get to golf nowadays, typically since our boys were born, was uh, with customers, clients, you know, events. So uh, hey, if you're if you're out there listening and, and you need a fourth, uh, I'm here. But um, <laughs> So yeah, that's that's about it. You know, enjoy enjoy golf, and and uh, my wife and I are, are and our kids are uh, involved with our uh, local church, and so we do a lot of stuff with uh, with church. My wife sings, and and I'm on some church council teams and and committees and stuff like that. So that's uh that's about it. Well, that's great, man, and, and it sounds like you got a lot going on, and and I'm with you on, on from a church standpoint. That can. That can be a full time job sometimes, but it's a, it's great that you're serving there. So so thank you for that. For the last question, how about this one? You know, for Eco S Y, we love to understand people's why. Why do you enjoy the career path that you're on, Dan? I mean, you, you do a great job. You you've obviously just uh, had a lot of, of cool milestones in your career. So why do you enjoy it? Well, you know, this is you know kind of a way to maybe plug the company I work for, but honestly, I can, I can sit here and tell you that Eaton is a phenomenal company to work for and they really support their employees from factory floor to, you know, director level and above, like they, they want their employees to get better every single day and they invest in their employees to do that. They provide safe work conditions across the world. I mean, I'm I'm kind of touting Eaton a little bit here, but that that has made my career fluid. It's made it go where it went because of the opportunities that have been presented to me. And I work with some of the greatest people that I've ever met. Uh, I have some of the, the greatest support staff that are out there. So honestly, the career path I'm on has been dictated by the circumstances around me. As long as the people stay as great as they are. And as long as, uh, as long as Eaton stays as great as it is, you know, my, I'm hoping that my career just continues to move where it goes. And that's, uh, that's kind of what I've enjoyed about it. I, it's been a lifelong learning journey. I've been with Eaton for 14 years and, you know, I'm, I don't see myself going anywhere. I, I see myself, you know, sticking it out and continuing to learn and, uh, that Eaton's on the front line of a lot of really neat technology and a lot of neat fledgling industries uh, that that they're working towards. And and just to be a part of that has been uh, exciting. And I'm proud to be a part of it. Well, Dan, thank you so much for walking us through this. We got to, to know you a little bit better here. Whether you want to call yourself a Titan or a hero, I'm good with either one, man. Uh, I, I thank you. You are uh, just a... Um, just a great, great partner and, and friend personally. Uh, so and I really thank you that you took the time to sit down with us today and, and walk through this. So I really appreciate it, Dan. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. I mean, this, this, what you're doing for our industry is just phenomenal. We don't see a lot of this. We don't see enough of this The podcast you're putting together, the investments that uh, eco has made in, in doing this type of work is phenomenal and i do believe that that's going to help potentially close that that gap that we were talking about earlier and and it's with you that uh we can get there so thank you and stay safe out there yes sir thank you so much dan thank you for listening to eco ask why this show is supported ad free by electrical equipment company eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.